the we and today we'll be talking about earthquakes so what causes earthquakes we've learned in geography classes in our school earthquakes are caused by you know the tectonic plates moving and doing their shit and they move in you know very inconvenient ways we experience tremors and the earth shakes and everything falls and people die and there is damage to property so that is how earthquakes happen but you know what happens in japan for these earthquakes to occur so basically in japan earthquakes are caused by a big red fat worm it's very nasty it looks like so now you know what i am going to talk about today it's about tsunami okay that was that was intended to be cute okay Uh, so I am not an anime watcher. I'm not a weeb. Is that the word? Uh, I've watched roughly four or five animes in total. I, I'm not a very big anime watcher, but I remember watching Your Name two years ago or something, and I really liked it. So that's why uh, when I realized that the, it, this, it's the same director that has made Suzume, I just wanted to watch it. I just wanted to uh, experience it. And this is the first time I'm going to a theater and watching an anime movie. So back to the movie. So the director is Makoto Shinkai. I don't know how that's pronounced, but he was also the director of uh, you know Your Name and Weathering with You. First of all, I'd like to talk about the visuals of the movie. It was very beautiful. All of uh, you know the animation was really good. All the visuals are very pretty, except for one particular thing that uh, you know I didn't like, and my friends also didn't like. This is the part where a jalebi forms. People who have watched the movie will understand what the jalebi is. It's basically that big fat worm uh, doing a formation, and it looks very bad. It looks like you know they forgot to put it in the movie, and they made someone else do it. And like, can you please put this thing in the movie? And they did something else. That what it looks like. That is the only thing I didn't like. But everything else was really beautiful, especially with the you know soundtrack and all that. The the way they introduced the title was very nice. Uh, you know. There is a scene, and the scene closes, and the title appears, and you know the, the song plays in the background. The title song that is very good. Uh, so the soundtrack is amazing. All the background songs are amazing. The visuals are amazing, and the storyline was uh, I wouldn't say very unique or you know something that we have never seen before. It's a very basic plot line. Uh, Pakshi, the journey of the I wouldn't say it is a very unique storyline or very you know groundbreaking or something that we've never seen before. It's a very basic storyline. The people are the main characters. They try to solve that problem. That is what happens in the whole movie. And the problem is the big fat red worm. So that is it's a basic plotline. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a you know it's not like your name was a very complex storyline, right? It it was not linear at all. It was very thought provoking or confusing because it had a very complex story. Like this is not the same as your name. The main characters are Suzume. She is a seventeen year old girl, and uh, another main character is Sota. He is a closer. Uh, basically, uh, he has a you know spiritual job assigned to him that he has to do, and he accidentally meets Suzume when he is doing his duty, and then they go on an adventure together. That is what the whole movie is about. But the thing is, I didn't really feel a connection to Sota. I I felt a connection to Suzume because it's like we're empathizing and sympathizing with her. But I didn't feel uh, very convinced with their relationship, like Suzume and Sota. An instance where the event he has to face an unfortunate event and his life is almost you know done. But I didn't feel sad or anything. Usually, I'm a very emotional person. Usually, when I see someone. Some something bad happened to someone, especially the main character. I cry like hell. But this time, I didn't feel anything. I was like, okay, he. I'm very, very unfortunate. I feel bad for you, but I was not bawling my eyes out. I was not. Oh my God, the main character is gone. Nothing of that sort. So maybe it's a me thing, but I personally did not feel a connection to Sota at all. But there is another character, Daijo, the cute little cat. That cat felt more, you know, closer to my heart. And I think that character was more memorable than even the main characters combined. Uh, Daijin had a character development that I didn't. I don't think the other two characters had. Maybe they did, but I don't know. But I felt like Daijin had a more complex character development because towards the beginning we were made to hate that cat. It was very cute, but we were made to hate it. We thought it's you know wreaking havoc all over Japan, and he's the one doing all those bad, evil things. 
And towards the end, we understand that that's not the case. He is not evil at all. He is just trying to help, and he was just looking for love and appreciation. And uh, like the you know very annoying person I am, after I watched the movie, I was like, oh my god, I'm so sad about the kid. The kid sacrificed itself. And like she sacrificed the cat for that boy that she met yesterday. What connection does they have? I was like ranting. And I came back home and I started researching. I was going through explanations, reviews. I was going through YouTube videos, and I found one YouTube video. I'll link it in the description. His explanation somehow gave me some solace. Okay, he talked about Dyson in particular and what his character signifies and what how his character is important in the movie. Dyson is a deity, okay, and he was assigned with a duty to you know protect people from uh, dangers. He was not worshipped or appreciated for his duty or for the sacrifice he was doing. That is, you know, it is symbolic of the fact that as we age and as uh, time goes on we tend to forget our roots and traditions we tend to stray very far from our culture our traditions all of that he is a forgotten deity he is doing a very important job but he is still not worshiped or revered by the people so that is why when dajun gets freedom he likes it. he likes the attention he likes the freedom he likes the love that he is getting from suzume so it's symbolic of the fact that he is not you know sad that he was trapped somewhere and he wanted to live he wanted to live a life It's nothing of that sort. It's just the fact that he felt very unappreciated, and when he finally got that, you know, attention, he was very happy with it. That's why he wanted to stay that way, not go back to being that protector or do his duty. That is the whole thing. I felt very happy uh, going through that explanation because I felt like it was very unfair for the, uh, you know, for Dajun to be. He didn't get to live the life he wanted to live. That was my perception, but it got completely changed after the video. So that's about Dajun. Uh, so it's evident that Dajun is my favorite character from from the movie, and after knowing that the voice actor is also a very small kid, uh, it was very heartwarming because usually we see that even the adults are the ones doing you know even the children's voice acting, but this was uh, done by a very cute uh, little girl, and that also made me happy. Now I'll uh, say something about the ending of the movie. So there is a uh, an implied time loop at the end of the movie. Where you know young uh, Suzume meets the older Suzume, which is fine, but you know you we've been watching time loops over and over again in all movies, and it kind of felt like a very unnecessary addition. I'm saying that that scene wouldn't have changed anything. It's okay. Oh, okay, that happened. That is it. It was. It was not. Oh my God, that was what was happening. It was not like this. This is a random scene that is put there. So there are a lot of explanations saying that it is symbolic of the fact that the older Suzume has overcome her trauma or. Going through her whole life and got to a point where she accepts what was happening with her and she has let go and it's symbolic of the fact that this young Suzume meets the older Suzume and they exchange that you know the older Suzume gives wise words to the young Suzume. I I stick to the symbolic kind of explanation because otherwise it's a if, if it's a material loop that they're talking about it doesn't feel very convincing to me. So it's symbolic of the fact that she has grown and overcome the trauma and the whole process is summed up. And I saw a lot of people saying that the whole movie is about overcoming trauma, because you know she has suffered in the past. Also, one more thing about the movie that I liked is that it explains how hard you know these disasters are in Japan, because Japan is a very disaster-prone area. Uh, earthquakes happen there all the time. It also uh, refers to a tsunami, the great tsunami that happened in Japan. So the director has done a good job with making us feel the pain that this little kid had to go through. And how disasters, you know, affect children and people and their dreams. There are a lot of scenes that make us, uh, you know, very sad, and it touches our heart. A lots of scenes with, you know, these forgotten people, their dreams, their, you know, ambitions and all of that. So the director made a good job in managing to not go overboard with the whole thing and maintain the balance between the characters and, you know, the historic events that he was trying to mention. That's all about the movie. Uh, overall, I really like the visuals. I really like the movie. Uh, there are little bit of things that I did not like, but that's okay. It was a very good experience. And another thing I want to mention is the title track of Suzume was not played uh, full length throughout the movie. It was played at the end credits, and it was very uh, wholesome to watch. That no one left the theater. They sat down through the whole end credits scene so they can just listen to the song. So that's about today's video. If you like the video, please tell me in the comments and also give me suggestions on what I should do next. So that's it. Ta-da. Bye-bye.